Hello guys, TavHD here and welcome back to another video and today we will be installing the Arctic Freezer A35CO into my main computer. Now this cooler is compatible with both AM4 and AM5. My computer is an AM4 based build, it has a Ryzen 5 3600 in it, so we will be installing this today on the AM4 platform. I'm going to go through the whole thing from digging it out of the box to getting it all set up just so you know exactly what to do if you have this for yourself. Now the reason I've bought this is because I've recently retired the liquid cooling from this machine. It was never really necessary on a 3600 based machine anyway but I did it just for a bit of fun. If you'd like to know more about that machine and the cooling that was in it I'd suggest watching my previous video because I talk about why I've ditched the liquid cooling in favour of this so yeah that is why I've got this just more simple and everything like that so today we're going to be setting it up in that machine if we first off take a look at the box we can see a picture of the cooler there you can get an RGB version but I don't want that the case I will be putting my computer in doesn't even have a side window so RGB doesn't matter it says we have a six year warranty which is good it comes with some MX5 thermal paste that is good because I have run out of that down here we have the name Freezer A35CO. CO means continuous operation, as it says there. And at the bottom, of course, it says AM5 and AM4. On the side, it just says what it is, a tower CPU cooler for AMD. On the back, it tells us that we can look at an online manual if you so desire. And at the bottom, we have some more information too. Hopefully you can see that. So there is some general specifications there as well as specifications for the fan. It is a 120 millimeter fan, which is good to know. A lot of cheap coolers have like a 90 mil fan, but this one has a 120. And speaking of cheap coolers, this thing is not expensive at all. This only cost 32 pounds, which I think is very reasonable for what it is from the reviews I've seen. This is a very capable little cooler, but I'm very excited to see how it goes but that is enough talking there's nothing else to really see on here so let's open this thing up and see what we get inside now that's a nice touch thank you for choosing arctic i do like that and it says attention semi-passive zero db mode fan will not spin below 10 percent pwm so that's good to know it's just warning you that it's not broken if the fan's not spinning that's kind of just what it does so we've got a little box here i'm guessing this has our mounting things in it as well as our thermal paste and we only have one other thing in this box and that is the cooler itself got some plastic protecting the bottom which is nice to see and yeah that's it that is the cooler that is pretty much all there is to it so let's take a look in this box to see what we have actually got so it's all in a little bag here we have two metal mounting brackets we have four screws for the said mounting brackets we have our tube of mx5 and we also have four little gray standoffs i don't know if that's the official name that they're calling these but that is what we've got and that is everything we get. We don't get a paper manual with this. As it said, we need to use the online one. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is what I got when I scanned the QR code. If we start at the top, package content, it tells us exactly what we get in there. Close that, open the next one, preparation. It tells us to remove the standard black mounting things that come on AMD boards by default. Mine does currently have that installed because my previous cooler did require them. So that is the first step. We're going to have to remove those. Next step is telling us which way to put the cooler. We want back exhaust, so we're going to mount it the correct way up so it sucks air in from the front and out the back. Although you can do it the other way if you want. And then installation, it tells us to install those standoffs, then the metal brackets. And if we scroll down, we then put screws in. Scroll down again, it says to put the thermal paste on. Then we take the fan and the shroud off. Then we put the cooler down and screw it down. And then it tells us to make sure we screw it in properly, evenly on each side so the pressure's not all wonky. Then it tells us to put the fan back on and then plug everything in. So yeah, 
That looks pretty straightforward, so let's start by removing the standard AMD mounting brackets. Okay, so here's my machine. You can see the two mounting brackets at the top and bottom. Each one of them has two screws in it and we simply need to take those off. There we are, that is a top one off. I kind of made a mess of that, wasn't sure if the screws were captive. Turns out they are not. And remember that there is a back plate on the back of here, so make sure that doesn't fall off. It's probably best if you do this when the motherboard's not in a case so you can like hold everything together properly. But I already have this in the case, so we're gonna do it like this anyway. So I'm not gonna recall taking the other one off because it's exactly the same process, but just again. Okay, so this is actually gonna be quite difficult because the back plate did start to fall off. So I've leaned it over and now of course it has completely fallen off and it is now here. But the next step is to use these standoffs and we need to line each one up on top of each of the screw holes. And that's gonna be difficult because I'm gonna to have to hold this back plate on from the underneath while putting these on top. So I'm gonna try and do that now. If not, I'm gonna to have to try and prop this up somehow. But yeah, it's not gonna be particularly easy, but it should be doable. Well, quite frankly, that's the most difficult thing I've probably ever had to do computer-wise. It's not that what you've got to do is difficult, it's just difficult because I did it in a case. So please, please, please do this with the motherboard not in a case, that would make it so much easier because your back plate would stay still. Just keep the motherboard laid down flat and it will be easy if you just do what the instructions say. I, it took me so long my camera decided it wanted to corrupt itself, so yeah, that's fun. Hopefully all the files are still intact that I've already recorded. But yeah, please don't do this in the case. I've had to balance it on like a 45 degree angle, I've managed to cut myself. So yeah, that is not the most fun thing I've ever done, but Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so the next step is to remove the shroud and the fan off the cooler. So I'm guessing it just is clipped on and should just pull off. That's not some very confidence inspiring noises, but oh well. There we are. So now we've taken that off, the next step is to apply thermal paste. As usual, it's a sort of rice or pea-sized amount. So I will do that now. That will be enough. I'll put the lid back on that so it doesn't go all crusty. And what we need to do now is put the cooler on. Now it's important that you get this the right way around so we can put the fan back on. So because we're doing it with it sucking air in from the front, the flat bit is gonna point towards the front of the case and of course we need to take the plastic off the bottom of the cooler that is an important step sometimes people forget that and that's not going to be very good for your cooling so now we need to put that down line it up with where the screw holes are and then just screw that down make sure you screw this down with even amounts of force and there we are I have now successfully tightened both of the screws and we can now just slide and clip the shroud back on. All right, so there we are. I've got the fan back on and I have plugged it into the CPU header. And now we can turn this thing on and hopefully it'll work. All right, so I've booted up the machine and as you can see, the fan is spinning and we are successfully at the desktop. It did reboot a few times, which was a little weird, but it is now on and it seems to be just fine. Now, as it said in the online manual, you probably should go into the BIOS and configure all the fan settings. I'm not gonna go through that today just because it is so well documented in the manuals. If you want to go through and change all that, just do what it says on the website. They know better than I do. It is their product after all. So go ahead and do that if you like, but that is where I am now gonna leave it for today. So we have now simplified my machine quite a lot by not having any water cooling stuff and just having a single fan air cooler. And it is a lot quieter as well because you can't hear liquid sloshing about and you can't hear the pump. So yeah, I am very, very impressed. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned to see me transfer this computer into a different case, that case down there. So that is something to look forward to. So thank you again for watching. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful in some way. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.